This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. All right, welcome everyone. We're at Geshe Ladas Seminary. We're going to learn the Fushalayim of Amirim Liba Bastavora and the Fushalayim of Chaim Ben Rachel, Mindel Sara Rivka Bas Blima, and Chai uh, Rachel Bas Nissel. They should have a Fushalayim. As we come to Yom Adin, to the Day of Judgment, um, If, it, if we would have clear minds, we'd be very frightened. We don't have clear minds. We have Yetzirah that puts us in a um, world of darkness. Uh, that we don't see clear. It says that on Rosh Hashanah, Malachim Yechafezen. The angels are frightened. V'chil Ura'oda Yechezen. V'chil, shaking and quaking, seizes them. Hine Yom Adin. That's from our liturgy on Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. Behold, it's the day of judgment. We are wrapped up in the minutia of life. And it's very often that a person is much more worried about what they're going to wear to shul on Rosh Hashanah or if the menu is set or what's the latest honey cake recipe uh, or honey chicken than their fate for the coming year. It's just... That's the way of the Sahara. Remember, as aspiring mummies, besides being uh, individuals and caring about yourself, as aspiring mummies, you have to know it's going to be your job to create an aura in the home of preparing, not necessarily fear, but of awareness. And preparing for the Yom Adin. It says, Mereshi Sashana Ad Acheri Sashana. And it says that the end of the year is determined by the beginning of the year. The amount of effort we put into the beginning of the year, into Rosh Hashana, that determines the entire course of the year. So let's say you'd love to have a good summer. The good summer of Tav Shinai and Zion is determined by the quality of the next days. I'm a tennis player. I occasionally play tennis for exercise. I'm a big believer in exercise. Uh, and uh, so I play tennis when I get a chance. So I gave a shear recently in Queens. So when I give a shear in Queens, there's a group of people that afterwards invite me to play tennis with them. Uh, whenever I go to Queens, I call them, and they're ready with three other people. I play, I play doubles tennis, and they put together a game. There's a tennis center that's open late in the night. And uh, this tennis center in Flushing, Queens, has the world-famous U.S. Open. Now, the U.S. Open in Flushing, they just built a retractable roof so that if it rains, the roof comes up and then the roof closes so it doesn't ruin all the games that are being played. They spent $300 million on this roof. And this roof, and this roof, not only can you come in, but it's a pleasure to have you. 
this roof is only for two weeks. Because the U.S. Open is only two weeks of the year. But more than that, the entire complex, which is a gorgeous, it's one of the most gorgeous tennis complexes in the world, is funded from those two weeks. Those two weeks fund the entire complex for the entire year. People come from all around the world to play tennis there. It's funded just from those two weeks because of the revenue of of the television revenues, of the uh, advertising, and, and the crowds that come during those two weeks for the U.S. Open funds the entire year. And when I was there, I was gaping at this monstrous roof. Imagine they spent $300 million on this roof for two weeks. They only use it for two weeks. And I thought to myself, that's the two weeks of Slichus Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur. That, that funds the entire year. It fuels the entire year. The quality of our Rosh Hashanah, the quality of our 10 days of repentance, it fuels the entire year. Now, I've told you already that the smart person makes a to-do better list. Because you come to Hashem and say, I want a better year. I'd like a better job. I'd like things to be better at home. Better, 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 better. So Hashem says, sure. But be fair. Tell me how you're going to be better. And now's the time really to start cracking on getting better. So, in life, every age has its challenges. Every age. Like you don't have to worry about in-law problems. You don't have to worry about raising teenagers. You don't have to even worry about being patient with the baby. At your stage of life, you have your unique challenges. And those are the things that should be under the microscope now on how you can be better. So if I had to pick the number one thing that most of you should be working on now, it's the quality of your kibbutz of aim. That's huge. When you look to do tshuva, how's my kibbutz of aim? How's my yira? Ish imayva of tiro. There's two mitzvahs. There's kibbutz of aim. And there's Ish Imai Ve'aviv Tira. It's two different mitzvahs. Yira, reverence, is that you're never allowed to tell a parent no. You can't say to a parent, you're not right. You don't know what you're talking about. You can't talk to a parent that way. If you do, it's more dangerous than going into Joe's Cafe and ordering a plate of pig. Because for eating pig, you don't lose your life. But it says, And the says, Wait a second. We're supposed to serve Hashem. What are you giving us, lollipops? Schar is in the next world. So Mamloyi says, it's a scary inference. If you don't honor your parents, you won't live long. <coughs> the same way, 
that we're always checking our mezuzahs because it says of saftam al mezuzahs beisecha v'sherecha l'man yibu yamechem v'yamei v'neichem you know you'll live long and Rashi says but if you don't have mezuzahs then you, you might not live long that's why we're careful to check our mezuzahs just the same way we check our mezuzahs we have to check always our kibbut avain Hashem says now smart people and I'll tell you the truth it's something you look for something to improve I'm, it's going to be uncomfortable in the beginning but if you're smart twice a day you'll stand up for your parents if you're smart they'll tell you no no don't do that <laughs> I want you to feel heimish you know I, and I, and it feels funny if you're smart, you'll get accustomed. Now, Svardim stand up for their parents even a hundred times a day. But we Ashkenazim do it twice because it shouldn't be more than Hashem. It says by Hashem, Pamayim Biyava Shma Imrim. So we show allegiance twice a day. So we do it twice. Now, I have one daughter, one of my daughters. It's very makbar on this. Whenever I or my wife comes into the room twice a day, she stands up. Now, I only practice this later on in life. Now, when my mother comes in, I stand up. And it's such an opportunity. It's such an opportunity. That's what the Torah says. In the beginning, your parents will say, what's this? Why all of a sudden? You can blame it on me. You can tell them that you have a Rebbe that wants you to live a very long life. Did I tell you yet the story of the milk crates? No. This ch- story should change your way of looking at the mitzvah of Kibbut Avay. You see, we have, a, we have a practice in Yiddishkeit that when we see somebody that lived a very long life, we ask them, What do you attribute your long life to? They asked Rav Moshe this question. Ramesha Feinstein, Bamer after Yaman, and he said in his Russian Yiddish, Man ganz Lebin hab ich keinmal getan weit zu a Menschen, which means my whole life I never caused another person pain. That's what he attributed his long life to. My ganz Lebin. hab ich nicht getan Vaitsu I mentioned. They asked Rabbi Yaakov Kamenetsky. And he said, My whole life I never told a lie. And I try not to cause people pain. They asked this question to Rav Shach, who also lived to over a hundred. And he gave an interesting answer. You see, these answers are answers that people could emulate. I mean, he could have said, I learned every minute of my life. Do you know that Rav Shach, when he was running away from the enemy in war-torn Europe, he walked around with a shirt. He only had one shirt that had, it looked like it was torn to shreds. You know why? Because in the night he would want to learn. There was no electricity in those days. And he would go into shuls and find scrapes of wax. And he needed a wick. So we would tear a piece of his shirt and use it as a wick to learn Tyre. So if you want to know why Rav Shach learned long, you learn Tyre all the time. But he didn't give that answer. He says, I lived long because I always benched from a bencher. That's what he said. The big thing to bench from a bench. When you bench from a bench, you have more kavan. 
Nam, so much Kavana. But when you look at the words, first of all, it slows you down. Oisi ois makimois. You see the word. I'll tell you another sweet thing. When you bench with a bencher, it's worthwhile to come to the shit today just to hear this. When you bench with a bencher, you get your eyes in the mitzvah. It's a schus for your eyes, a protection for your eyes. If you bench by heart, your eyes aren't part of the mitzvah. When you bench, it's three brachas to rice and one bracha to rabbana. Don't you want there are people later on in life to have trouble with cataracts? They have trouble with their vision. Don't you want to do a mitzvah with your eyes? When you bench from a bench, or when you daven from a sitter instead of by heart, you're getting your eyes into the mitzvah. So there were, I got distracted. There were, there was a woman in Staten Island, well, a family in Staten Island. The woman passed away at the age of 98. A few years before, her sister passed away at 98. And they still had a sister living that was 97. So three girls, they weren't girls, (laughs) three old ladies (laughs) that were all living almost to 100. So I asked somebody from the family, did you ever ask them what they attribute their life to? I mean, (laughs) you want to know what water they drink? You know, uh, you know, what's the secret? So he said, we asked them, and all three gave the same answer. Now this is, by the way, this is the reason why you come to seminar. I'm going to give you, this is, who doesn't want to live long? <coughs> Listen to this. They said that when they were little girls, teenagers, Younger than you. Their father was a grocer during the days of the Depression. He had a grocery store. Now, you're too young to remember, but they used to sell milk in glass bottles. And the glass bottles were delivered in wooden crates. See, he would get 13 wooden crates of milk delivered by the truck outside, and he would have to schlep them into the store. Because the truck didn't bring it into the store. And he had a bad back. And the whole day he was crexing in pain from lifting those crates. So his three daughters decided and made a solemn pact amongst themselves that they would get up at 3.30 in the morning and two of them would get up every morning, set their alarm clock at 3.30 and bring in the crates so that their father shouldn't do it. And they did it in the snow in the winter. They never went away in the summer. They did it in the heat in the summer all their teenage years. They never miss the morning. And they say they are certain that for that sacrifice, that's why they all lived into their deep 90s. That's Kibbutz Amein. That's the man you in your mouth. You want to show Hashem that I want to be better? Become specialists at Kibbut Aveng. <coughs> and by the way, one of the ways to do this is not to wait to be asked, <coughs> but rather initiate. <coughs> Ma, I have some time. How can I help you? Tati, I see you're really tired. Abba, Daddy, whatever you call them. Is there something I could do to make your life easy? You have no idea how much Hashem loves that. 
You have to realize something. In the Ten Commandments, the first five are between us and Hashem, and the second five are between us and our fellow man, right? Belief in God, not worshipping idolatry, not swearing falsely, Shabbos. That's between us and Hashem. The fifth commandment is honoring your parents. What's it doing on that tablet? And the answer is there's three partners in the creation of man, mother, father, and Hashem. Hashem says, I'm the silent partner. The way you treat your parents, that's the way I know you'll treat me. That's the litmus test. That's the barometer of how we would be. That's how Hashem judges us. You want to know a great way to do kibbutz of aim? First of all, don't yell at your parents. Now, they might yell at you. And we're reciprocal beings. We reciprocate. You cannot afford to reciprocate. Your parents are tense. They're frustrated. You can't afford it. Figure out a way not to reciprocate. You're talking about your life. You're talking about making Hashem proud. We don't pick our parents. Hashem picks them. But Hashem tells us what to do. It's the fifth commandment. Never risk waking up your parents. Now, I grew up, it's funny nowadays, when people have summer homes with three and a half bathrooms. I grew up in an apartment building on the fifth floor with only one little bathroom. And it was at the end of the hall, and next to the bathroom was my parents' bedroom. When I used the bathroom in the night, I never flushed the toilet. Now, you feel funny not flushing the toilet. But I never flushed the toilet. I never wanted to risk waking my parents up. Wake up, wake a parent up. You know, that's the famous mice in the Gemara. The Gemara says, Ad heichon kibbut of aim. And the Gemara tells us about a guy, Dama ben Nesina. That somebody came to him to buy a gem for $600,000. It would have set him for life. But the key was under his father's pillow and his father was sleeping and he didn't wake him up. That's the Gemara's example of Kibbut Avain. And the Gemara tells us that the next year Hashem rewarded this guy, his name was Dama ben Asina, that a Paraduma was born in his flock, a red cow, which was priceless. And they came to buy it from him, and he said, I know I could ask whatever I want. If he asked for $10 million, he would have gotten it. There's a celebrated case recently in Lakewood that a red cow was born. And somebody offered the owner a million dollars for it. And he said, no, he wants to have the zechus that, uh, that he should use it for the coming of Mashiach, for Paraduma. Interesting people in the world gave up a million dollars. At the end, the animal became pregnant and it became puzzled for being a Paraduma because if it's pregnant, that means it mated. Once it made it, it's possible for a paraduma. But anyway, Dama ben Nesina, Dama ben Nesina had a paraduma, and he said, I'm only charging you 600000 the money I sacrificed to fulfill honoring your parents. But that, you see, a guy, a guy that doesn't have concepts of Eilam Abba, sacrificed not to wake up his parents. You know, people come in late in the night, they slam the doors, start making noise. Keep it up, aim. You have to know before Rosh Hashanah, you have to really, really, really say, How could I be better? How could I be better in my davening? You know what davening stands for? What's the word davening? 
Stamina Yisachar says, Davening is de'avinan. Davening, de'avinan. That of our ancestors. Because we know Tfilus connected all with Tiknam. Shachris is Avram. Mincha was made by Yitzchak. Yaakov was made by Marv, was made by Yaakov. Ask yourself, can I tell Hashem that next year when I daven, I'll really think that I'm talking to Him? I'll really believe that my davening is going to make a difference? That's a capital improvement in our life. You work, get into the habit of giving tzedakah. Best thing is to carry two wallets or have a separate wallet in your pocketbook and every time you make money take off 10% and put it in the other wallet. That's, then it won't hurt you to give the money away because that's not my money, that's my money. Then it won't, it won't even bother you. Work on brachas. It says... Shemayim, Shemayim, La Hashem, Varetz Nasan Levnei Adam. This world was given to man, but it says La Hashem Varetz Amalaya. The world belongs to Hashem. Which one is it? Is it La Hashem Varetz Amalaya or is it Varetz Nasan Levnei Adam? So the Gemara says, Kan Levnei Abracha, Kan Leachar Abracha. Before the Bracha, it belongs to Hashem. Afterwards, you eat without a Bracha, you're stealing from Hashem. I don't want to be a thief. I don't want to be a robber. Especially not from Hashem. I'm going to be more careful. I'm going to realize, just like I wouldn't take something from the store without paying from it, for, for it, I'll never put something in my mouth without making a bracha. Try to do a kindness every day. Ramilla used to say, "Al shloisha dvarim ha'olam ha'imid al atayrav al avaydav al gemil askasadim." Taira, Avaid is divine service, it's our davening, and Gemilska Sodom kindness. He says, everybody davens every day, they're careful. Those that have to learn Torah, make sure to learn Torah every 12 hours. He says, you gotta do kindness every day. I remember Rev Miller saying that if you're, it's the end of the day and you didn't do a kindness, hurry up, buy a bar of soap and bring it into the shul bathroom. But don't go a day without kindness. A lot of people that would come to kindness. Yeah, if somebody asks me something, I do it. Don't do kindness. When you do kindness, Hashem wants such soldiers on the world. Oh, Hashem wants such soldiers healthy. Kindness could be, you know, one of the worst things in life is loneliness. If you have an older neighbor... Or somebody that's homebound. You visit them. You play a game of rummy with them. You bring them a magazine. You sit and tell them about life, your life. And you, you're a friend. You know what a kindness that is? <coughs> you know what a kindness that is? Remember, give Hashem reasons to give you a good life. When we say Manishtana, right before it, it says, Kana ben Shoyal. Here the son asks. Duh. <laughs> it's for somebody that just walked, walked off the moon. So the daily Admirim say, Kana ben Shoyal. Here is the place to ask for a son. You just don't, don't ask for a son. You ask for a son that you should be Mekayim Vigal to Levincha. The mitzvah of telling him about Mitzrayim. That's the way to ask. It's the same thing. You don't ask Hashem just for a good year. Say, Hashem, give me a good year because i got a lot of plans. I'm not only going to look into Shaduchim, but I'm going to, if I go out with a boy and he's not for me, I'm going to think which of my friends he's good for. I'm going to care about people. I'm going to realize that I'm a base Yaakov girl who's dressed sneers. And therefore, everybody in the street knows that I represent Hashem. And therefore, I'm going to be courteous to everyone, to a mailman that passes by, to an old guy on a bus, 
to a guy in the supermarket, I'm going to look for ways to bring pride to Hashem. But after it's Hashem Ali Kecha, we say in Kriyishma, Shetehei Shem Shemayim Mis'ayv Al Yodecha. The name of Hashem should be loved through you. You're all ambassadors of the Rabbi Nishalai. And Hashem sees that and he says, wow. I want this person on this planet for a long time. It's one of my people. One of my girls. Mishus of having many things on a to-do better list. Even in saying to Hashem this year, every time I say Moldim and Shman Esrei, I'm going to have something to say thank you for. Whether it's I had a good sleep last night, whether I got a new pair of slippers that I really like, whether I have this great friend, but every Moldim I'm going to say thank you for something. And once on Shabbos, I'm going to think that I believe that you created the world. It wasn't always here. It didn't come out from a big bang. And once a day, I'm going to hold my hand on the mezuzah. Not just kiss, I hold my hand and think, Hashem, I know you're in here. Once a day. I'm going to get used to that. I'm going to become a Yorish Shemai. Through that little action of holding my hand on the mezuzah once a day for two seconds. I could use two seconds so wisely. Two seconds, a long time. I'm going to think that I, I believe you're watching me. That's a great way to become a Yerush Great investment of time. I want to wish you all a Ksiva V'chasima Teva Masuka. It's not enough to say Ksiva V'chasima Teva. Good, everything Hashem does is good, but it should be Masuka, it should be sweet. That's why when we dip the apple in the harmony, we say Shana Teva Masuka. Everything is good. The Hashem doesn't do it bad, but it should be sweet. And if it's the right time, you should find good to Shiduchin, have Gesund, and everything wonderful. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.